Most of us use our telescopes from the comfort of our own home. Warm or cool, depending on the time of year, cozy overall. And from a technology perspective, access to home Wi-Fi, the internet, and AC power. But every once in a while, we have an opportunity to image somewhere else, somewhere like this, or this, or even this. Maybe it's just a vacation rental, and it's not power that's the problem, but us wondering how we're going to remote control our telescope when we get there, after we leave behind our trusty home Wi-Fi. Recently, these remote imaging scenarios of what I've been asked about most. It's probably my own fault. Not long ago, I showed how to add additional features to WISE cameras, like RTSP video streams that can be viewed on Nina's imaging page. In passing, I mentioned another feature in that same video, self-hosted or isolated mode, which allows you to run your own WISE camera without the requirement of having internet access. It was the mention of running our systems without internet access that really got the questions coming in. So stick around with me for a bit, and I'll show you what I recommend you add into your own remote imaging kit. Of course, I'll also show you how to get it working. I'm Chad or Patriot Astro. Welcome to my channel. Since we're talking about remote imaging, you'll notice I'm in a different location as well, and one with some background noise. Sometimes you just have to take it as it comes. All right, let's make sure we're all on the same page. When I talk about remote imaging today, I'm talking about picking up your automated telescope system and bringing it out to what may be the middle of nowhere. Somewhere there's no Wi-Fi access and possibly not even internet or mobile access. As far as my own high level requirements, I wanna be able to get set up quickly, remote control and use my system just like I do at home. I want consistent power provided to my equipment Plus, I'd like to be able to roam around and talk to others for some portion of the evening. And later on in the night, I'd like to be able to put eyes on my system without either freezing or being eaten alive by mosquitoes. Basically, I just want my stuff to work like it does at home. I don't want to have to think about it a whole lot. I want to have fun and I want to enjoy my time without fighting with anything. I just want to physically set it up and get it going. Is that too much to ask? Let's get power out of the way first. Most of you know from my early videos that I adapt my power cables, meaning I cut all the cords. It's all 12 volts, so I can cable it all together and run it into a single 12 volt power supply at home. This also makes things easy when I go out into the field because I just disconnect that one cable from my AC power supply and connect it directly instead to my 12 volt battery box. I'll try to remember to link my battery box build video here, but you don't have to build your own. There are several off-the-shelf options on the market that I can also link in the video description. But that's not what I want to talk about right now. I want to talk about consistent power. If you've used a battery for imaging before, you know that your voltage starts high, maybe even up around 14 volts, and then as the night or nights go on, it'll drop. And eventually, somewhere near maybe under 11 volts or around 11 volts, your gear won't run anymore. So my recommendation today is simple. Consider picking up and wiring in a buck boost converter. This allows you to have a range of possible input voltages, which for this particular converter is anywhere from 9 to 40 volts. But the output from this converter will always be 13.8 volts at up to 10 amps. I use this both when either battery or AC powered. My Skywatcher mounts perform much better guiding when the input voltage is consistent and in the higher end of the expected 12 volt range. You'll actually find several places online, including Skywatcher themselves, that recommend you run their mounts at higher voltages. I myself keep it at 13.8 volts because I'm not just powering my mount, but also cameras, my mini PC, and a number of other devices. I'll put a link for this converter in the video description. I think this one is around $30, but you can locate others that may be smaller and even cost less. I prefer this one because I don't have to set the input or output voltage manually or worry about something getting bumped or changing. And that's it for power today. I don't need you to reinvent the wheel and go buy a new battery or anything like that. Just consider the consistency of your power source voltage level feeding your equipment and how it could possibly affect things like mount guiding performance. Next, and this will be very brief, I suggest getting a small screen and keyboard mouse combo device. I just get the ones advertised as being for Raspberry Pis because they're small and low power. The screen and keyboard I carry along with me are generally just for emergencies and take up very little space. The screen is USB powered and the keyboard mouse combo device uses a couple batteries. Better to have this stuff just in case. 
You may use it to fix a mini PC that's misbehaving, lend it to a neighbor who's having an issue with theirs, or even run your session right from there if you absolutely have to. Now let's jump into the bigger part of today's conversation, connectivity. Here I am in the middle of a field or campsite and I want everything to work just like it does for me at home. I wanna connect everything the same way and just have it work. Oh, and when I said I want it to work like it does at home, I meant it. I don't wanna to have to install or run any special software when I'm out in the woods. I don't wanna to have to write or run any scripts and I don't wanna forget any steps for some process I hardly ever use. And as a result, have something not work. Not everyone will agree with me here. Some already have their solution working just fine using some of the stuff I just mentioned, and that's perfectly fine. Remember, if it's not broke, don't fix it. But this technology stuff isn't super easy for everybody. Not everyone can write a script like you and I. Not everyone can troubleshoot these problems that may arise like you and I. So I'm gonna find the easiest way possible, and that's what I'm gonna share today. In my experience, anyone can connect a USB cable. Well, some of you may try to connect it upside down at first, or maybe even jam it into an HDMI or ethernet port, but eventually you'll get it figured out. And that's pretty much all I'll be asking you to do differently in the field, plugging in one USB cable. After we set up the basics at home, heading out into the field for a night of imaging won't make you paranoid anymore. And this here is the tiny little miracle that's gonna make all this happen. It's extremely lightweight and barely draws any power. It's very easy to set up and even easier to use. I'll start with some basic assumptions. You already have a home Wi-Fi network with internet connectivity, but it could be wired ethernet, it doesn't matter. You have a mini PC controlling your telescope and you're already remote controlling that computer from another computer that's also connected to your home network. If you need help setting this part up, go watch my mini PC video or my multi-part Astro PC series. You likely also have some other devices on your home network that you'd like to take along with you. Maybe your phone, or even that wise camera we keep talking about. These aren't required, but can be nice to have since the mobile phone can serve as a backup screen for remote control and the camera can keep you out of the cold or mosquitoes depending on the time of year. Okay, this is what you have today and it works. Every night you power it up and it just works. You want that same exact experience from a tent, camper, parking lot, or star party, but how? So here's that magic little device again, a tiny low power travel router. I'll provide affiliate links in the video description, but this one here is from GLINet. It's small, lightweight, and uses very little power. So the speed and range will be less than your home network, but it will do exactly what you need it to do in the field just fine. And for less than 30 US dollars, you really can't go wrong. To get started, you'll use the two cables that came with the travel router. The first is an ethernet cable that you'll connect from the WAN port on the travel router to an ethernet port on the home network. You'll only need the ethernet cable and port during initial setup and won't need it later when you're remotely imaging. The second cable is a USB cable that you'll connect between the travel router and an available USB port just for power. When imaging later, you'll just power this travel router from any available USB port, maybe one on your mini PC like the Melee Quieter 3. The travel router will boot up once it's powered via USB and will connect to your home network via ethernet so it can have temporary internet access available during the setup process. It'll also automatically advertise a temporary Wi-Fi network that we'll use to configure the travel router. I just got on my control PC. You can see I'm remotely controlling my mini PC over the home Wi-Fi network from here. You can even see that my WISE camera is running the WZ Mini Hacks add-on and is streaming its current view to Nina. Let's see if my control PC can find the travel router's initial Wi-Fi network. Here it is, named after the router model. Let's connect to it using the default Wi-Fi password, which is GoodLife. After connecting, I can direct a web browser to the IP address of the travel router, which is 192.168.8.1 and continue through the setup process, which is very simple. It'll ask you to create a new login password, and once you're logged in, you're going to do two things. First, you'll update the firmware of the device to make sure you have the very latest code running. This is one of the reasons we need internet access in the short term. I've already done my update, so I'm not being prompted. The second thing you're going to do is set up a new wireless network on this device that looks the way you want it to look when you're out in the field. I'll set mine up now. I'll name it Astro Remote and set a key. 
As soon as I click apply, I'll be kicked off the old network connection. I'll just reconnect using the new Wi-Fi network we just set up and get back into the admin interface of the travel router to verify the connection. At this point, the control PC is connected to the travel router on the Astro Remote Wi-Fi network. Now we need the mini PC to learn about and connect to the Astro Remote network as well. To do this, you could use a local keyboard and mouse attached to the mini PC, but I'll just connect back to my home Wi-Fi network and use remote desktop to connect to the mini PC, just like I do during my imaging sessions at the house. On the control PC, I'll reconnect to my home Wi-Fi network. Then I'll remote into the mini PC and show you how I want you to set up the new Wi-Fi network. Normally, most people just go down to the bottom right over here and tell the system to connect to the new Wi-Fi network. The problem with that approach is that as soon as you try to connect to the new network, you're gonna lose your remote control connection before you can enter the password for the new Wi-Fi network. So that approach doesn't work for us. Instead, come down here and click more Wi-Fi settings. Now you can click Manage Known Networks, where you can define the new Wi-Fi network manually before attempting to connect. I'll add a new network and enter the name and security type of WPA2 Personal AES and then the security key. I'll tell it to connect automatically and click Save. Okay, great. The mini PC now knows everything it needs to connect to the new travel router-based Wi-Fi network. Let's tell the mini PC to switch over to that network. When I click connect, everything will seem to freeze because the two computers are no longer on the same network and can't see each other anymore. So I'll close the remote control connection window and tell my control PC to jump back over to the new Astro Remote Wi-Fi. Once I'm back on the new Wi-Fi network, I can open the travel router's connected clients page and see my mini PC is here as expected. Now, just like when you set up your mini PC at home using my process, you should reserve an IP address in the travel router for the mini PC so it can always be found in the same place on this new network. They make it real easy for us here. Copy the MAC address for your mini PC from the client list and click here on more settings, then LAN IP. Then go to the bottom of the page where we can add a static address binding to the travel router. Paste the MAC address or find it in the dropdown list and then add the IP address that it was assigned already and save it. Now anytime the mini PC connects to the travel router, it will always get this IP address. Now we need to try to remote control it over this new network. I'm not gonna show you the step-by-step -step process for adding another new shortcut for the remote desktop client connection to this mini PC when connected to the travel router since it's the same process I use in my mini PC setup video and a number of others. Basically, I end up with two shortcuts for controlling my mini PC. One I'll use when I'm on the home network and one I'll use when I'm traveling. And just like that, we're in remote controlling this mini PC over the new travel router Astro Remote Wi-Fi network. So this was actually pretty easy. To summarize, all I did was connect the travel router to an ethernet port and provide it USB power. Connect to the temporary network it advertised to me, create a new Wi-Fi network and update the firmware, then I told my mini PC how to connect to it and got it connected. And finally, I set up a new remote desktop connection icon on my control PC so I can connect to it from there over the new Wi-Fi network. At this point, technically, you're done. You can take your telescope and mini PC, control PC, and then this travel router out into the wilderness, power it all up. Your devices will see and connect to the travel Wi-Fi network automatically. Other than using the new shortcut on your desktop, you're not gonna do anything different than you normally do at home. I'm of course gonna take today's discussion just one step further. Let's bring some more devices with us out into the wilderness. Maybe my phone or tablet, just so I have it ready as a backup remote control option. I also like to take a wise camera with me so I can use the RTSP video streaming capability to monitor my equipment without having to leave the comfort of my tent or camper. The problem we have with the wise camera in remote settings, however, is that the WISE camera typically requires internet access and won't function without it. There is a workaround though if you already have installed the WZ Minihack software on your camera. To get that working in this setting only takes a few more steps. I'm going to assume you already have a WISE camera with WZ Minihacks working on your home Wi-Fi network. If you don't already have that working, go ahead and watch that video and then come back to do this part later. First, make sure your mobile phone is on the new travel router Wi-Fi network, then we can continue.
Open the WISE app and start adding a new camera to your account. Then press the setup button underneath the WISE cam. Go through the normal process of adding this camera to your app, but make sure that you connect it to the new Wi-Fi network on the travel router. Once it's added, because the travel router still has internet connectivity, it will behave just like any other WISE camera. While we still have an internet connection through the travel router, go ahead and do three things. First, go into the camera's settings using the application on your phone and define any parameters you'd like to use for this camera, like how you'd prefer the IR light to behave and whether you want the camera to record to the SD card continuously, things like that. Second, we need to make sure the camera will always get an IP address that will be consistent. Just use the same process as before and go into the travel router's admin page, find the MAC address of the camera, and if you're not sure what that is, remember you can get the MAC address of the camera physically from the sticker on the camera or within the WISE app on the camera's device info page. Once you've added that static reservation for the camera to the travel router, there's only one thing left to do. We need to go into the WZ Minihack software on this camera and change the self-hosted setting in the configuration file from false to true. You can do this by editing the file directly on the SD card or using the web interface that WZ Minihacks provides, or like me, editing the file via an SSH connection. All of this was explained and demonstrated in my previous video. If you need any help remembering how to do it, go back and watch that one. Okay, that's it. You now have your control PC, mini PC, phone, and even your WISE camera all connected to and using this travel router. We can now unplug everything and take it along with us on our next adventure. Just set it all up like you normally do, but also plug in this little travel router into a USB port to provide it power. I use the USB port on my mini PC, but you could power it from your control PC or even directly from your battery box. Because everything is already aware of and has connected to our new Wi-Fi network, everything will just come up and be ready to go. You don't need to do anything special. Just remember to use that new remote desktop icon on your desktop, that's it. So let's double check my requirements and see if I met them. No need to install or run any special software, check. I don't have to run any scripts, check. No major on-site setup or process changes, check. All I need to do is bring this tiny box along and plug it into a USB port and then remember to click the right desktop icon. The solution just works. And for those of you who like to have internet access, this travel router even supports tethering your Android or iPhone to provide internet access to anything connected to the new Wi-Fi network. Since my plate solving is done locally and my framing is either using Nina's offline sky map or Stellarium, I don't need internet access and I can get everything to work exactly the way I want even when there isn't a cell tower within 100 miles. I know some of you really want to use your Windows device or your phone as a hotspot, and honestly, I don't have a problem with that. But for everyone else that isn't as tech savvy, who needs the easiest way possible to make this work, anyone can set up this router in just a few minutes and with just a few steps. So let me know what you think and continue to reach out with questions or suggestions for videos. Of course, please like this video and subscribe to the channel and share it wherever you can. I'm doing my best to get back to everyone as quickly as I can. There are a couple questions sitting out there, but usually those are the ones that I need a little more time to either think about or perform some testing before I respond. So in almost every case, if you're waiting for me, I didn't forget about you. But if you're worried, just send your question over again. I hope everyone has some good imaging nights available soon, whether you're home or away. I hope you get some great photos while you're out there. And of course, I hope you get some great clear skies.